Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check before we begin? Uh, if you could kindly type a one in the room, if you can hear me and if you could see the shared slide. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anka Metcalf and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Futures Trading Room. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday, everyone. And it is August 12th, 2021. It is 9.05 a.m. Eastern. Let's get started. Today is the last day of the open house. For those of you that are new, and we constantly have new faces here in the room, which makes me super happy because I get to share my strategies, my methodology with uh, all of you guys in here. So my name is Anka Metcalf, like I said, and I'm the CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com. And I own a company, Trade Out Loud, that is an educational focused company, educational and service focused company. And we focus on teaching uh, traders how to day trade and swing trade futures and the equities market with our system. You can trade anything. You can trade stocks, you can trade cryptos, you could trade options, etc. I have been doing this for the last 18 years and Trade Out Loud has been around for 11 years already. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. I run the Trade Out Loud trading room. I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs. I also have managed day trading and swing trading accounts for my clients. And uh, we do offer specialized uh, education and coaching for uh, day trading and swing trading. I specialize in high velocity moves, uh, which typically are running instantly almost instantly into targets, depending on the market environment. And I am the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. What this means is that I'm not the creator. And it's really hard for someone to say, oh yeah, I have invented this strategy. No, they have been around for many, many years. It's just that everybody's personalizing them. So I have personalized this institutional proprietary uh, trading system that enables retail traders to participate in the move ahead of the crowd. So you're trading with the institutional moves. The system is based on uh, eight layers of price port resistance. It is uh, built around specific trigger times and the market rhythm. And it's also um, very keen on respecting chart synchronicity and divergency. And uh, also we have specific price zones that we pay attention to. Again, these are not proprietary to myself. These are areas where institutions uh, leg in or leg out of trades. So we know where these areas are. Our risk disclaimer, uh, all information provided by myself and obviously trade out loud that I represent is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. Pretty sure you know that trading involves a high level of risk. And yes, you could lose money if you don't know what you're doing in the market. Before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and of course, your risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time, commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical, and individual results will vary. You must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. If you guys want to learn more about Trade Out Loud, you can hop onto our website, which is tradeoutloud.com. I don't recommend you do that now. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you have any questions about any of the materials that we have uh, or any questions that you may have for uh, one reason or another, you can reach us at info at tradeoutloud.com. Here are the rules of the game. No questions in the first hour. We focus on trading, not unless we have a very dull session in which I'm gonna ask everyone for uh, to please post your questions. We will allocate time at the end of the trading session for Q&A. Small accounts can participate in any kind of futures trading activity. The amount minimum, the account minimum that I do recommend is not less than $5,000. And then you can participate using micros and position sizing. Uh, if you're here for the very first time, watch the market dynamics. This is a good opportunity for you to test drive the room to see if this is something that it is for you uh, before you sign up. 
Uh, position sizing is key. We recommend traders to use one or two percent of their account size. Uh, that represents the risk per trade. You don't respect that. You're not going to make it into trading. Sorry, I have to be really frank with you. Um, so what I do, uh, because I do trade multiple account, I do trade multiple contracts. I exit half of my position at target one. I scale out another quarter at target two, and the rest I trail into further targets based on price action. If trading with one contract full or micro for various reasons, traders will look to trail since no partial exits are possible. And therefore I will highlight the trailing uh, areas where uh, we need to bring our stop up or down depending on the position long or short. For example, if a trade is called, for example, ES long 4431 by 4420 and let's say targets uh, 44, 437, 4441, or 4452. Uh, the, first, um, the first two letters represent the symbol. Uh, then we have the direction, whether long or short, the L or the S. Uh, and the first number represents the entry price times the stop price. So the entry and the stop are always going to be associated. So you have the symbol. So if I call a trade, I say S&P long 31 by 20. You guys need to understand it's 44.31 by 44.20. If I don't have time to post it in the room or if the price action is really way too fast. All the trades will be called on the mic and full analysis for those trades. And uh, parameters will be called obviously ahead of time as price action is dictating. And if the market is very fast, the trade will also only be called on the microphone. I do appreciate we only trade for two hours. So since we are sitting down right now, no breaks for the next two hours. Um, <clears throat> okay, so like I said, all call trades will be trailed live on the microphone. So I'm not gonna take a break and say, hey guys, you're on your own, do whatever you want, respect your plan. No, I am telling you exactly what I'm doing in my account. And please be on time if you're late, uh, or we will not answer questions that have already been discussed in the room. Uh, what to expect? Well, every morning we begin with a pre-market game plan. We analyze the current market environment. We go over the news and uh, analyze the impact on the price action. We uh, look at the major earnings reports from the prior day and the current day open because these earnings reports are highly influencing the market activity. If we have any kind of stock that is um, influencing that particular day's uh, activity. So for example, there are stocks that are stronger, for example, like Google, Amazon, Walmart, Boeing, et cetera, that are impacting the current price action. We are going to uh, identify trading opportunities, identify high patterns, waiting for a trade, determining the execution strategy and parameters of the trade. Uh, we're going to do live trading. That's what we do every day. Um, and of course, at the end of the session, we're going to recap the session. We're going to do a little bit of uh, PM planning uh, and highlighting some of the areas that may be in play for the afternoon trading session. We focused on momentum, scalping, continuation patterns as well, trend trading, counter trend trading, and swing trading, day trading and swing trading. So we focus on any uh, type of trade uh, that comes our way. All right, so today's Thursday, uh, and uh, before the market opened, um, Baidu was the bigger um, stock that had reported earnings before the market opened. Yesterday, the bigger picture was Clover. Uh, Clover is up big in the pre-market. We also had eBay that reported earnings. And after the close today, we have Rocket. And don't forget that Rocket is a Wall Street bets uh, trade. We have Airbnb and we have DoorDash, Disney, of course. Disney is a Dow component. So all eyes are going to be on Disney after the close. And of course, if you're uh, trading, let's say the um, Asian session, you may have a continuation in the Dow because you can trade futures through indices. All right. Major economic events for today. Uh, we have um, we had actually the PPI, the core PPI and the unemployment claims that came in all at 830. 
Uh, we're almost into the clear right now. At 10.30, we have natural gas storage. This is not going to impact the market. And that's pretty much it for today. Yesterday, I did forget to announce the winner. So today we will announce four winners uh, for the trading room. So sorry about that. We had terrible storms here uh, and uh, I had to really take off uh, take off uh, a little bit earlier uh, yesterday. I had to run an urgent uh, errand. All right, so uh, micro uh, treasury yields contrast set for this Sunday. Um, that is another micro into the suite that we already uh, have uh, within the indices in oil. Uh, we have in gold and uh, some other uh, instruments. And uh, I'm gonna be very excited to see that, you know, smaller accounts may be able to participate into these uh, really great um, treasure yield contracts, treasury yield. All right, so like I said uh, yesterday, I did forget to announce the winners. And that is because we had a, and like I said, we had a trade into the end of the session that by the way, the Dow hit all the targets. And um, the prize will be announced towards the end of the trading session. We will try to make the announcement as we're exiting the trades. Yesterday was a very tough session. Not every day is like an instant gratification, uh, but we do have a lot of days where we're typically done at around 10 o'clock, 10, 1030, maybe 11 o'clock and we're done. We're shutting it down. All right, so let's get into uh, the market right now and uh, let's see what we have for the trading session today. And then uh, we will award the winners, <laughs> okay? Okay, if you don't mind, give me a quick one and let me know if you guys can see right now the six charts that I'm displaying. We're gonna dive right into analysis. All right, thank you. Okay, so the, Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so we have once again a divergent market. Uh, we have NASDAQ that is still under a lot of pressure and we have NASDAQ that is hovering under, um, um, under a lot of pressure. Uh, like I said, under a lot of selling pressure, we have um, the price that is uh, slightly downtrending in YM on smaller time in I'm sorry in Nasdaq on smaller time frames. Uh, we also have the price uh, trading under a death cross, which makes it a little bit more bearish. We do have another level of support here that can also serve as a moderate bearish below. So with this means uh, yesterday this level was here as well and. Like I said, these are the two levels that were here uh, yesterday. And this is the big support level. If we're not getting any kind of bounce into this area, so we're more likely that we're gonna stall into this area and probably we're gonna try to break down. Um, the other thing that I'm watching here is that there can potentially be a bullish above level and I'm just seeing it right now. I'm going to call it BA. So that's the bullish above. Uh, and this is going to be uh, over 15,035. However, extreme caution because it's still uh, the price action is still kind of, you know, uh, under pressure from this death cross. And uh, it is kind of weak. At the same time, I um, want to highlight the fact that when you're looking at the daily chart, you're still trading on the 20 SMA and this is rising. So one thing that if you look at this chart pattern is that we had really big extreme reactions when the price came into the 20 SMA. So the price pulled back, it elevated, pulled back and elevated and pulled back right now. So we have one, two, three candles to the downside, uh, not counting the top. So let's say four candles to the downside. And then today's price action, is it going to be a digestion day or is it going to be a follow through to the downside day? Because we have been a little bit weaker. We are a little bit weaker to start the day. Remember, 24 points down. It's not a big deal. It's like for NASDAQ, that could be like one little bar. 
on the two minute or the five minute. Uh, but definitely this is going to be a very interesting area to watch to see if we hold this 20 SMA. Every single time when we came into the 20 SMA, it was a pop-up zone. So um, a lot of times, you know, it faked traders to the short side and then it ripped higher. So uh, once again, we do have a bullish above level uh, and I'm gonna zoom in back into this one hour. And this is just to compress the price action a little bit so you have uh, the bigger picture. Um, I'm a little concerned about this uh, death cross here. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see. I would consider this more of a moderate bullish above level than anything else um, into the 15,035. So if the price is going to get above the 15,035, we're going to look for an entry here. So we're not going to get in right away. Um, oil, you can see we don't have any levels, and that is because we do have yesterday, we did have a, a bullish above level and it traded. So if you took snapshots of the, um, of the oil uh, chart, uh, you can revisit it. We also have a lot of pressure from a declining 200 simple moving average, which is crossing right now with the 20 simple moving average. The price is trading under the 20 simple moving average and currently under the uh, 20 SMA. So that gives a little bit more uh, selling pressure than buying pressure, but also it is trading off of the 50 SMA. And as you could see here, yesterday we had a pretty decent reaction off of this level. So we kind of like created the pendulum effect back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we started to launch higher in the afternoon trading session. So at 12 o'clock, there was that boom, that trigger. And I'm really happy that we took uh, that we took the Dow into a last trade of the day. Uh, that definitely followed through into our last target of 80. Um, like I said, this is going to be very interesting the way uh, the if we are going to start closing uh, into the top of the hour into 10 o'clock above those moving averages. I'm also looking at the four hour chart here, which is an inside bar. Now, this bar has just started forming about 20 minutes ago. This bar is going to complete. It's going to close at one o'clock. Uh, so it's going to take a lot of time. We also have nice confluence support where um, the price is elevated above the moving averages, which gives it a lot more pressure from the higher for higher price action dynamics. However, the one hour, like I said, is still under pressure. Smaller time frames. if you're looking at a 15 minute, it's still back and forth. So I'm going to keep this chart on the one hour. So I navigated a little bit away from the indices that you can see because I'm going to leave the indices to, uh, last. Um, the uh, gold, uh, like I said, we did have a bullish above level yesterday. It triggered in the overnight trading session. It came back into the New York trading session here at nine o'clock. If you guys were here and took advantage of it, here was the target one. This is the target two. And then look how it came into our target. I didn't change the levels. You could view the recording from yesterday's trading session. So we went exactly into our targets. And this is what we teach in our classes. Now you have to understand that these levels that you guys see here on the charts, they don't represent support resistance. They represent an array of levels that are derived from support resistance. They don't represent pivot highs and pivot lows. They wouldn't be like too simple to do that, but they represent an array multi time frame calculation uh, onto these charts. And we teach uh, you how to perform. You're basically going to be your own signal service. So that's the beauty about it. All right, so no other levels that we have for the trading session today because we are still in full swing uh, from yesterday's trading session. However, I'm noticing that we have a pullback uh, of a, we have actually a one, two, three, four, five pullback. This I love these three and five pullbacks that are uh, setting up on the one H chart. Um, I'm seeing a doji here. So if we start trading above uh, 51, um, actually, you know, we do have that line in the Santa 53. So I would give it a little bit of more room into the 54. And this is what I always do into volatile markets, give it a little bit more room to prove that it's uh, really going to tackle that area. And then we have another target into the 60 contingent on the support level into the 44 is holding. We do have the participation of the 50 SMA. So that is really nicely coming up right now. Uh, ascending. So this can be possibly be a pattern that may be conducive for a continuation higher into the 60, continuation into the 64. We have another level here and we have another level into the 71. Today, the line in the sand. So we had a line in the sand yesterday uh, into the 53. 
Now the line of the sand is going to be into the 80s. This is a heavy confluence uh, resistance level. Not only that, we have a declining 200 simple moving average, which puts a lot of pressure on price. But if throughout today and tomorrow, the price is going to start getting above that 1780 area, we are going to look very bullish going into next week. And same with silver. All right. So um, from the indice standpoint, just want to take a quick peek at something else here. All right, so I've been mentioning, you know, natural gas, obviously natural gas is going to have uh, its numbers at 1030, inventories at 1030, copper is stuck into some moving averages on the daily, it's not performing, it's not doing anything. Uh, grains are super sideways, wheat is the only, um, only chart that I see here that is a little bit more bullish, it has a bull flag formation, pull back by off of the 20 SMA and with higher highs and higher lows. So right now it's into the core of the last bull flag formation. All right, so let's talk more about indices. Like I said, I started talking about NASDAQ. NASDAQ is under a lot of pressure from this death cross and it's kind of ranging lower here, but don't forget that the uh, daily chart, weekly chart are very much uptrending, even though the a uh, weekly chart is a little bit more elevated, but it was, uh, it, and by the way, seasonality is kicking in here. So NASDAQ doesn't really perform that well into the month of August anyways. Um, so uh, that's not reason enough. We're still trading into the 15,000. 15,000 is the core of the range. As you can see here, we have another uh, level that we crossed right when the numbers came out. And then we're kind of like toggling back and forth into this area. Like I said, I want to see it clear 35 to 40 area, develop a setup into this location for the price to start continuing higher. Uh, we don't have a lot of room into the next resistance into the 50s uh, because we do have a flat 200 SMA. But throughout the tr today's trading session, if we take, uh, if we, uh, if we actually move above this uh, uh, 200 SMA, we are going to have some velocity and that may take the price higher for about 40 points. So from 60 to uh, 100, I can see that as a, a potential target area. Okay, let's get into Russell. Now, if you guys remember, uh, we had a trade in Russell, Russell that stopped out. It came in and took everybody out. So this, this was the name of the game yesterday. It took everybody out because yesterday what they did is they were writing the machines on higher time frames instead of the smaller time frames. So that's why everybody was like, every, it took everybody out or they didn't give opportunities to, uh, for uh, other retail traders or other traders in general to participate in the game. Uh, just like the Dow, because the Dow had a pop up uh, right into the open. So here we had a clearing of the stops. We had an Ultima support level into the 2220. This is where we stopped out finally. Uh, remember, we had an add to the trade uh, that basically broke even because we needed to see it into the 35. If we would have had it into the 35, the add. Uh, we would have taken out the ad because it served this purpose to bring the stop to break even, and then we could take a decision whether or not to keep uh, to keep the rest of the position active or to close it all together. Uh, definitely, the twelve o'clock was the kickoff of the bullish. Uh, it's literally they turned the machines on at twelve o'clock, and uh, this is what happened. So this was the breakout level, uh, if you recall, it was the twenty two forty four. And 22.44 triggered, went higher. Now we have a moderate bullish above level here, above 52. We're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna wait for the market to open before we uh, get into anything today. Uh, we do have room for above. We have a target into 55. We have also a target in very close to 60. We have another target into 60, close to 64. And from this point on, this is the velocity area. So if the price is gonna get over 64, price is going to start going ballistically higher because this is going to be a massive trigger for the upside. The m and &E S&P, again, uh, it came in, uh, it rotated. Again, it happened at 12 o'clock. You can see the time bubble. It rotated for higher, uh, consolidated in the overnight trading session, had a peekable high. We have a new all-time high into the m and &E S&P. The price pulled back. 
Uh, and right now we're trading within inside last hour. And this is the numbers hour that came out. Uh, we have a high of 44 and we have a low right now of 37 and we have support, minor support actually right here, including a confluence support level. So this is a massive support level that we have. Not only that is developed from a prior pivot low, but it's developed from a prior pivot from the uh, from prior days. And also we have multiple, multiple, multiple other, that's why it's a confluence. You have multiple levels in that collide around the same area. So this is a really massive area in which uh, the price, if the price should come in, can potentially pop up. Also, we have last but not least, we have the YM, which is super strong. Uh, higher highs, higher lows. It's actually into a nice continuation pattern. And the name of the game is 20 SMA. You can see here that once it gets extended from 20, pull back, extended, pull back, and now it's back. But you can see that the pop-up was a little bit more shallow in the overnight trading session than it was in the prior uh, price action, right in the prior two days. So we're going to have to wait and see how the market is going to react. Now, the market just opened. We're going to dive into smaller timeframes and we're going to put the put the five minute right now. We don't want too small. We don't want too big of a time frame. Uh, I usually have a preferred uh, index before we start off the day. And I'm going to say, I kind of like, again, YM and uh, M&E S&P. All right, the market is a little bit thinner. This is uh, also something that is characteristic for the month of, um, uh, yes, and that is characteristic for the month of August. August, September, and October are very difficult months. That doesn't mean that you cannot make money in these months. I always make money in these months, in the summer months. And sometimes you may have summer months that are more, much more powerful than uh, any other uh, regular month of the year. All right, so uh, we have our indices to small time frames. It is time for us to settle down and start watching for some trades. The first minute is in. Why am I holding and it's uh, trying to pivot a little bit still very early. And like we have discussed last week, uh, we still have a lot of room into the 500 and 580. Discipline is very important to have the patience to wait for a pattern. No patience, no paycheck. It's very easy. Have to know exactly what you're doing. Know your parameters so you know your position sizing. Look at multiple markets so you could get a better gauge of the environment. Yeah, that's right, Randy. No greed. Yes, green. Totally. Love that. Noticing that NASDAQ, which is some, um, which is the under pressure index is holding compared to the other indices that are pulling back. This is just a drama pullback. They probably turn on the machines. There's some, there's some pressure there. Yeah, totally. No patience, no paycheck. You have to have a setup. You have to have a good enough reason to uh, start getting in. Something. Apple, yes, Randy. Apple is actually uh, looking there. I'm an Apple and I have been in it. Um, but... Let's see if today is going to trade over 146.80. 
14680 is going to be yeah uh 14680 is going to be that let go area it's going to start marching higher yes 150 target you got it 150 target nice round number Also, AMD is interesting. So since uh, we don't have any action right now in the futures indices, I'm going to, um, you know, mention some names. So AMD is uh, relatively interesting. It's setting up for a buy over... one oh nine eighty. So it still has a little bit to go, 109.80. All right, so a lot of chop into the market right now. We have to wait for the price to settle down a little bit. Remember, if the price is moving, doesn't mean that we need to be in a trade. We need to have like a pure pattern that we can engage into. Look at those big bottoming tails in YM right now. One big bottoming tail, one big bottoming tail in RTY. Amazon just uh, trying to level out that 200 SMA. Uh, by the way, brand new high in XLF in financials. Dow stocks are moving higher a little bit. Um, a lot of strength in uh, financial stocks aside from the ETF, uh, JP Morgan, City, uh, American Express hasn't lifted off, but it has a really massive consolidation area. Brand new old time high, uh, brand new high, sorry, in uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, Bank of America again, new high. Not seeing a lot of weakness. Intel is a little bit weak within the Dow, but that's pretty much it. I'm not seeing a lot of weakness. The NASDAQ stocks are a little bit weaker today, again. Uh, Baba moving lower. Twitter is lower. Facebook is lower, but Facebook is right on support. Yeah, let's wait for uh, at least the first 15 minutes here. 
more likely we're going to have a trade around 10 o'clock. Let's see if we catch, because if we have like this big move that is going to happen into 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock being the first major reversal time into the market, it may take the price a little bit higher. So we may have either a short squeeze or a scalp to the upside. If not, we're going to try to wait and see uh, how um, shallow or how aggressive the pullback is going to be into 10 o'clock and then we can start shorting. So for example, I'm looking at NASDAQ because it crossed into the moderate bearish under. So what this means is that the more it stays under that area, the more bearish it becomes, but at this point, not. Okay, so we're gonna have to be very patient today. All right, we're already seeing a little bit of a pop-up in YM. I'm going through momentum stocks to see what's going on. You know, a stock may be lining up for next week, Ford. Ford may be a stock for next week. All right, we still don't have any place yet to line up into the indices. Ford and GM moving higher. Uh, it's very important for me. I'm originally coming from um, stock trading. So I am blending stock trading with futures trading. I get an upper edge by doing that because uh, typically any kind of futures trader is not watching what I'm watching. So we get... Um, a big advantage. Here's an inside bar in the Dow. See, pattern is everything. Inside bar in YM, still under a lot of pressure from the MAs. The level that I'm watching is 93. So let's see if this, yeah, see 93 would be the trigger, but 95 is resistance. And then we have the 20 SMA for resistance as well. See it already triggered here. Not a fan of it yet, but it's a pattern. See, this is what you should be watching. One, two, three down and rotation from the inside, uh, from the inside bar. 
See, it's not going anywhere. It's stuck here. Like I said, 95 and 400 are going to be a big barrier. We trade above this and we need this bar to close above. So we need, we still have about two minutes left. One minute. See, and within this time, you needed to see the price kind of like start closing into that 400. If, if we wouldn't had any kind of moving averages here on this five minute, uh, wine would have been like a total go. So we would have called the trade long, guaranteed. But right now we're still having divergency into NASDAQ. So in NASDAQ right now, I'm watching smaller timeframes. I'm watching one and two minute to see how they're reacting, to see if there's any kind of setup that is forming there. And all I see is a bear cluster uh, with resistance. So see how it came in very shallowly. This is actually a very bearish kind of environment because if we were strong enough, we would have completed higher, regained the 73 and then pushed back up. OK, but now we went right into see how these levels are working, guys. This is not something that you can make up. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome, Odell. OK, so <laughs> so we came right into here. We also had this declining 10 EMA. And we also had this level uh, and then we punched in a little bit lower. And the question is. Uh, can we short into this area and we need to have more proof because as long as we have a stronger Dow, as long as we have a pop up in RTY and we also had a pop up in ES, uh, NASDAQ is not going to be a good candidate because oftentimes they do the slingshot below and then they start ripping to the upside. So it's what they're doing is they're chasing the stops. They're pulling the stops out. For the retail traders. See, this is an inside bar as well. So I would have loved to trade this. So for example, if it takes out this high of 37, so if you see a print of 37.25, this could be a trigger for higher, but unfortunately you have a confluence resistance into 37.5. So it's not gonna go, not unless you have some kind of news that it's gonna put it over that uh, resistance. But right now that resistance at 37 is gonna be a big block for the transition higher. And like I said here, even though the pattern seems very bearish, right? Because it is curling below the moderate bearish below. Remember that we're doing all of these slingshots. Yeah, exactly, Dale, <laughs> you got it. That's true. And not only from the overnight, but from today's session because they know that traders can in immediately. Anyway, a good, a stock pick for uh, tomorrow to watch is uh, XONE. If we have time uh, today, I'm going to uh, take you a little bit into a stock trading um, trip, just a little bit for some setups. All right, so you can see what's going on here. We had a big block of resistance into the 400. Take a look. You cannot make this up. The high is exactly 35 uh, 35,400 and the price got rejected. Okay. So there's a lot of divergency. In fact, this divergence, I haven't seen, uh, you know, this divergency last in a, such a long time because typically you have it for a day or two and then done, but we have, we had it all this week and we had it last week as well. So I, I think that, you know, it's kind of like here to stay. So we have to wait for the trade. We need to wait for the price to uh, price action to subside a little bit before we um, uh, and to clear to prove to us that it's ready for one direction or another. By the way, uh, AMD I was mentioning earlier, AMD may be ready to um, pursue higher. Noticing that um, NASDAQ is perky to the upside right now. See how they're trying to mislead everybody? So everybody would think, oh my gosh, what, 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 NASDAQ is the weakest index. Wow, we're going to take it short. This is what happened. They fooled everybody in. This is the breakdown. 
right here, 52. <laughs> Where did it go to 46? That's nothing compared to the risk. And then they took the price back up. So what they're doing right now is not only that they, they're taking all, not only that they took all the shorts out, but they took all the longs out, okay? They took the longs and the shorts out. Okay, so let's get back to this five minute. All right, five minute slingshot. You can see it right here with the pop-up above the level. The next resistance is 82. We're having now divergence in YM. YM fell out of bed right now, <laughs> including Russell. So we need to wait for more um, stability from the market right now. Still divergency, uh, take a look at RTY, RTY continuing lower. We just have to wait a little bit today, guys. That's it, no big deal. I like the way uh, NASDAQ is marching higher and here's Apple popping. We are still in the trade in corn and corn is still sideways. And by the way, Apple is approaching as well a weekly rotation. Apple looking very good. I uh, can't say the rest about the market, uh, but Microsoft is rotating. <laughs> All right, here's some rotation happening right now. Let's see if this is, gonna, is here to stay. There's a dark pool order in the queues at 364.59. So right now it's trading 365.08. So let's see what that's all about.
because the cues are into the same pattern. They have the same um, bearish pressure from the death cross. So we really don't know if they're positioning for short or positioning for a long here. We know that that order just came in seconds ago. Let's see, Russell is falling off the charts here. <laughs> Sean, yeah, not very dark, right? <clears throat> Since we can see them. <clears throat> so for today, we're neutral. We just have to see where the price dictates. See, this would be a five minute sell in NASDAQ, but this is too much of a pinch here. So I have to be aware of that dark pool area. I'm very interested, especially in these uh, dark pools that are coming from um, Q spies, because they're going to be affecting the overall C Nesta. Yeah, na finally a little life, <laughs> Randy, in J and J. All right, see the dark pool print? How uh, the institutions, it seems that they're positioning for higher. So if they wanted to fake everybody in short, see what they did. They force sell, and we ta often talk about this in the trading room. So what they're doing, they're force selling, and then they're buying at low prices, and then they're showing the prints. Okay, because remember that algorithms react ahead of the dark pools. Right, so that's why you need to know, you know, where these potential levels are. Um, there are multiple apps I use. Um, uh, for example, I use um, uh, I use Cheddarflow. or darkpoolcharts.com if you want to use darkpoolcharts.com. If you're at the beginner stage, don't use anything, okay? Don't use anything, just focus on price action, that's it. It's too much to handle. No, they just have these prints and your ability to interpret um, price action and, uh, uh, patterns and setups because they uh institutional traders they always go by patterns and setups <clears throat> <clears throat> then you can evaluate the buy zones or the sell zones so like i said there was an order in the queues so there was they, they were very sneaky they came in the queues and ultimately queues are affecting obviously nasdaq right same thing tomato tomato and uh, <clears throat> so in the queues i'm watching I'm still watching 
because we have that level. Okay, hold on just one bit here. All right, uh, we have that level over um, over 366.52, which would correspond in NASDAQ with in NASDAQ futures exactly with our 35. Wow, this is incredible. So this would be bull, their bullish area. So right now they may be doing some bottom picking or you don't know, maybe they wanna force sell and then buy and we're gonna have to wait and see. So they're positioned one way or another, but they're extremely bullish over this 15035 equivalent <clears throat> In the queues, that would be uh, in the queues would be three sixty six sixty five. Hey Jim, I'm holding it until targets are hit or we stop out. So we have a first target into uh, in corn. Okay, so we we picked up corn. Hold on just one sec. I have so many charts in here. <laughs> okay. All right. So we picked up corn last week. It was on uh, August 2nd at 556.25. And we have a first target into the 568, 570, 574, and 580. The time, to, uh, since it is a day trade, it can uh, last from two days to two weeks or even more depending on the market, uh, market activity. So a swing trade is typically defined by um, longer period of time from two days to two weeks or more, depending on market activity. And you stay in the trade as long as targets are hit or you stop out. Try to make it super simple, Jim. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Trading should be, and trading is easy. You just have to wait for the right patterns, for the right formations. I actually like what's going on right now in NASDAQ. NASDAQ can be a bullish or bearish, 50-50 shot right here. You can, see the, you can see the decision, right? Because we have this moderate bearish under, and we know that the more it trades and it closes under, we're going to be bearish. And if it's going to close above, we're going to start entering into continuation higher. I was looking for a short squeeze here with these bars, with these bottoming tails in um, that we've had, well, just one bottoming tail in YM. All right, NASDAQ doesn't want to hold. Let's zip it here to the 15. Further lower, NASDAQ engaging in lower as well. By the way, NASDAQ has a huge stop. Um, the short for it would be under 45 and the stop would be under, uh, the, so the, yeah, the short area would be 945 and the stop will be somewhere above 90, 990. So I'm not loving it. I'm not gonna call it. It's a little bit on a higher risk side. And we have that prior 15 minute, you see that 15 minute high low here. Okay, that is pretty much gonna set the tone.
you can see that once you have the cell, it's kind of stuck. So it triggers, it goes, it avalanches down into the prior bar and then it stalls. Oil is up. Mm, I don't know. No, they're not in sync. They're not in sync. Look at the bottoming tails. Careful here, very careful. And NASDAQ is right at the 20 SMA on the daily. And remember that we discussed in the pre-market uh, pre game plan that every time it came into the same area, it kind of popped up and it left a huge tail behind. Here's the chart. So are we going to have the same? Just take these off. Okay, so you can see price action here. Oops, let me zoom in a little bit. So we came into the 20, zip back up. Came into the 20, back up. Back into the 20, back up. Back into the 20. So see, we are back into the same spot. So are we going to have, because the last time we had bottoming tail, bottoming tail, bottoming tail. See, bottoming tail. So this is going to be very interesting here. I'm not seeing a lot of volume in the market. So that means that traders are just uh, sitting on the sidelines right now. These, And by the way, these are algo pushes and our algo uh, pulls that we're seeing right now. So not a lot of follow through that you can see. So it's not pattern based. So that means that these are machines trading the levels, trading the ticks, trading the points. They're not institutions that are trading the patterns. So maximum caution here. So NASDAQ, not only that has support on the 20 SMA, but also has support from um, another pivot from into the 940, right now trading into the 950. And we had a low of 941.25. And we have a cluster. We still have this cluster that is uh, that is on the uh, five minute. See, we're still trading into this cluster. Apple is still staying in the green. Microsoft is still staying into the green. Amazon is still respecting the 200 SMA onto the daily. AMD is on a, on a watch because AMD can be very interesting here. So I'm sprinkling a little bit from my stock trading activity. <clears throat> Intel, like I said, Intel is a little bit weaker. Uh, Bank of America financials continuing to be strong. XB curling around, curling to the downside. No trades yet. This is the quiet time and it is already 10.07. Let's see if we have a trade. And by the way, we haven't had a reversal into 10 o'clock. All right, so remember yesterday we talked about the 10 o'clock. We don't have a reversal yet into the 10 o'clock. So that means that it may be coming now or it may start coming in at 1030. Hey, John. Yes, it's uh, it's an old rule. Um, it can be applied to day trading and swing trading. Basically, the first 30 minutes in the uh, first 30 minutes from the New York trading session, 
uh, they're trying to balance and they're trying to show the trend. They're trying to show the directional bias. And uh, if uh, within the first 30 minutes you have, let's say, a range bound market, or if the market is powerful and it goes up, obviously, if the market is weak and it goes down like we have it right now, um, the first 30 minutes are a good indication about where the market wants to go based on the technical levels that you have on your chart. So uh, don't overthink it. OK, don't overthink it. Make sure that you have your top down analysis. So, for example, because we talked a lot about Nasdaq, I'm going to refer to Nasdaq because the daily, like I said, the daily is still sitting on this 20 simple moving average. It can repeat. So history can repeat itself and it can do a bottoming tail. So take a look at here, for example, on this day uh, was a month ago. Right. And a month ago, it breached the uh, it breached the um, 20 SMA. So it was trading, let's say, at 80. And it went all the way into the 40s. So it, it, it dipped down, right? It dipped from 580 to, to let's say, to, five, to 440. So from 580 to 440, that's a huge dip, right? And then what did it do? So through the New York trading session, it went down. And uh, I'm sorry, through the Asian session and New York session, it went down in the first half of it. And then in the second half of it, it ripped to the upside right? Just because it tried to pivot into this 20 SMA. And the next day, the same thing. So we opened, we went down, and then we ripped back up with the rotation here. So we went higher. And again, here we had the same thing. So is it going to dip down? And remember, these are the wiggles. I call these the wiggles, these bottoming tails. These are the wiggles and they show us whether we're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to see, um, let's say volatility or not throughout the trading session. So when you see support here, okay, then you zoom in. I typically zoom in on a five minute because I want to cut, you know, some of the noise. And what I do is like, you look at the 10 o'clock, see 10 o'clock sharp, it made a low. Typically the 10 o'clock low tends to hold, okay? And if it breaks above the 10 o'clock high, it has the tendency to be bullish, okay? So you're considering the 10 a.m. low and the 10 a.m. high. It breaks above the 10 a.m. high, it's going to be bullish. It breaks below the 10 a.m. low. Again, you have to be very careful based upon the pattern that you're trading, uh, multiple time frames, uh, how they're lining up, and it could be bearish below, or it could set up for a, uh, uh, for, for a pullback below, but it has more chances of staying below that 10 a.m. low than getting back into the pattern. And then, then if it gets back into the pattern, so for example, here, we have the 10 a.m. low, which is already set, okay? And you can see here that it's really trying to push higher. So the 10 a.m. is holding, and if we're gonna start breaking above these highs into the 90s, uh, we may have more flow to the upside than anything else, okay? So it's a simple rule. It can be applied to day trading or swing, tra swing trading. So for example, um, I've got, I've got to be very honest. I don't like to use hard stops when I'm trading stocks and, uh, when I, so I do use stops, but I don't use hard stops. And when, for example, I have a stock that is trading below my stop, I don't adjust it. So when the market opens, I could care less if I'm underwater in that stock or not. I just wait until, uh, 10 o'clock or 10 30. Uh, typically, I wait a little longer into 1030, but I apply the same strategy uh, and I bracket the high and the low. OK, that's that's yeah, it's 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 called the golden rule, John. Apply it to day trading, apply it to swing trading. It's really a great um, rule to to have in your uh, toolbox in your trading toolbox. You know, it gives you a little bit more confidence. Right. And that is also because John. Uh, you, 10 o'clock represent the first major reversal time in the market, okay? So at 10 o'clock, most likely prices are going to start reversing. So it's a time between 10 o'clock and 10.20. Typically, let's say 10 o'clock, yeah, 10 o'clock and 10, 10, 10, or so, where you are going to um, see this reversal happen. Laura, what happened with Randy? I'm seeing Randy, Randy. Yay, Randy. Oh my gosh, Randy in NASDAQ at 50, out at 75. Wow, awesome. Uh, Tammy, have you taken our class? I, your name is so familiar. 
Okay, you find it in the course. Come for the retake. You have the short squeeze right there. Insta strategies. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, Randy, awesome job, ready to resistance. All right, so we're setting up, guys. We may be setting up. The sun is coming out. Okay, huge bottoming tail. The drama. Is the drama over? Wow, I wonder. Okay, five minutes. What's the time? Wow, we may get. Okay, get ready, guys. We may have a trade in the Dow. Position for Dow. Active trader set to Dow. Active trader set to Dow. All right, we may have a trade, guys. Two ninety six down long the stop low of the day two sixty five two sixty five for the stop two sixty five for the stop. All right, here it is entry. We're gonna go for first target into three hundred. I know it's tight, but that's it. Target one, three hundred. We're gonna go for three ten, and we're gonna try to squeeze into three twenty. Sometimes they're coming super fast, guys. We need to poke above 300 right now. We need three. Okay, here it is. 301, good. We have 304 for the high. We need to break that 305 prior support right now is resistance. We poke over 07 and then we have the 310. We need 07 to get to 310. We have a 306 for the high. Like I said, we need 307 to start moving to 310. We need to see uh, right now an O five, three O five. Now we need three O five, three seven to get to three ten. Price action is a little bit choppier here. We're forming a sandwich on the one minute. 
So we need to uh, see the 307s in order to engage into 310, 320. And um, well, we still have about 10 minutes into 1030. But if we get into 320 by 330, uh, by 1030, um, we are going to extend higher, possibly to 332. So 330 for the target, 330 to 335. We just need right now, okay, so right now we need uh, 307 again, 307. So we have the, 30, uh, the 305, and we right now we need the 307 to start coming in. Russell and the Dow Divergent right now. Two sixty five is the hard stop. Two sixty five is the hard stop. We're positioned right now on the five minute with a topping tail, which is not very favorable for the pattern because if the price escapes below eighty, can stop us out. But we're gonna try to hang on, keep the hard stop, don't change the stop. We really need to get above the three hundred five. If we are going to get stopped out, it's gonna go to forty three. We're gonna to try to form a hook here, but it's really hard because price action is still into the, uh, into the bearish momentum right now. It went from bullish to bearish immediately, three minutes ago. <laughs> hey, Anna. <laughs> Anna Banana. All right, let's see if we get over that 07. 07 is key area for the Dow. Now, Russell is participating as well. See that prior support, now resistance is a big deal. So we just needed to consolidate here for a while. We're still holding the 300. We need 307 to get to 310. And then we need 312 to 313 to get into 320. We need to see those prints. We have a higher low on the one minute and the two minute. We have seven minutes into 10.30, 10.30 prime time trigger time. Let's see if we trigger just a tad before that 10.30.
307 is a big area to take out. And by the way, I just wanted to show you, um, see this, how the price went into our area here in the 305, right? Take a look on the one minute. Mind blowing, isn't it, right? Mind blowing, went exactly into this line and then it pulled back, right? We have a one minute rotation. Get back here to the five minute. Randy, you had an amazing trade. See the dark pull activity into NASDAQ? I didn't want to call NASDAQ because NASDAQ was, um, a higher risk. And remember, I was talking about the 20 SMA on the daily and the reaction. Okay, we're above the 307. We have the 310s target. If you want to scale out, no trailing just yet. Typically when I hit target one, I like to bring my stop up because the first resistance was 300 was literally ticks away from the trigger. We can't do anything. And even that's 310 is really tight into, um, into the trigger. So I can't make any changes right now because right now, if we make any changes, we're just going to be dinged out of the trade. Based on the current market and what I'm seeing right now, I would like to keep a last lot, we'll see if we get into the 320, but if we get into the 320, I would like to keep a last lot for higher today. Four minutes away from a 15 minute engagement and that engagement is going to be above 315. So if we hold and if we get a trigger over 315, we are going to go higher not only into our target of 320, but we're going to go 330 and 340. The reason for the stall right now is because we are approaching this uh, 10 EMA right here. And in fact, if you're just watching your trading session charts, it is much, much closer than uh, the one in the extended session. So I watch both charts, see the 10 EMA, short squeeze, 10 EMA, Target for the algos, and now it's decision point again. Okay, so let's put it back to extended. Okay, we're tapping in a 20 SMA on the one minute. Doji and NASDAQ on the five minute, prior five minute. So um, it could be bearish below 15,000. It could be bullish above 20. So bullish above 20 and it's gonna be bearish below 15,000. Uh, S&P still into a continuation pattern, still trying to determine the next action is still into resistance from the 20 SMA on the five. And also a little bit of minor resistance here. So you can see these prior lows right at 37. Take a look at this. Yep, it's the algos trading guys today. Tiny one minute rotation fighting in YM right now. Um, if the two minute is going to start kicking in, it's going to start kicking in again. <laughs> it's the same level as the 07. It has to regain the 07. 
the moment that I saw oil that is trying to straighten here, I knew that uh, the S&P is not going to want to fall apart. If we would have had a really weak oil, then I would have expected the market to continue lower, but we're not having such a weak oil right now. See, the more we stay here in the Dow, the more we are accumulating the selling pressure again. All right, and as you can see, NASDAQ popped over that 20 and it is engaging higher. NASDAQ has room into 30. We have continuation in ES. Our YM needs to start going a little bit here. YM was the uh, smallest risk trade that I found, like I said, because NASDAQ was a little bit way too aggressive. What is TWOH? Like so many block trades into this trade. Oh, it's a penny stock. Okay. All right. So NASDAQ made it into the 30s. And oh man, this Dow is just acting up here. And so is Russell. A lot more stocks are making new lows than stocks that are making highs right now, just FYI. All right, don't have another entry in NASDAQ. Hey, okay, NASDAQ engaging higher and getting into the bullish above level right here, man. And by the way, YM has the best, YM had the best chances of, uh, of the rotation to the upside because it had a nice extension. See this 10 EMA right here? This is the lid right now. So it needs to get over that.
Okay, so we have YM and uh, Russell divergent right now. Hey, Sebash, uh, where'd you get in? Uh, your next target is gonna be 50 and 80, and then 100, 50, 80, and 100. If you're in trail mode, I would lock in 15020 in NASDAQ. Great job. Yeah, Apple ripping. Beautiful Apple. Been in Apple since last week. The original stop remains in place in the Dow. We're not changing anything. All right, so NASDAQ is into the bullish above level. This is where, uh, th this is the bottom line. If it pops over this level, it becomes very, very bullish. Good job, Steve. I would lock in, like I said, I would lock in a little bit. So we have about, sec we're seconds away from a new decision on a tighter time frame here. So, so far, 15020, if you want to trail it very tight, it would be 25 to 26. And if you want to give it a little bit of room, that would be 17. Very interesting because um, we talked about it this morning, right? The reaction. We talked about the symmetry and the bottoming tail into the 20 SMA. Remember, I talked about pop-up, pop-up, pop up, pop up off the 20 SMAs, right? Pop up, off, pop ups off the 20 SMA. All right, we still need to engage in why I'm over that 07. So I'm trying to look for alternate trades right now. So remember in the pre-market game plan, you will have access to the video. Please, pre, please review this. You're gonna learn tons from this. Like this is literally like experience application into the market into a live context and uh if you recall i would talked about this level here that if we start poking above it any kind of setup that is developing into this area is going to start pulling it higher and the targets are going to be 50 80 and 100 right here this is uh pretty much the next target into let's say um uh today Come on, 07s. Late bloomer. If we are going to start having this close, and we're literally right now seconds away, 20 seconds away from this five minute close, if we have a high into this five minute candle, into the O, <coughs> excuse me. 
Okay. <clears throat> into the, okay, into the 07, which we didn't. We're going to start. Okay, so now the battle is into the next five minute sequence. Okay. We need to stay strong. So right now we still have the lid into that 07. So we have seconds. We were literally seconds away. We didn't have any power uh, uh, power moves that would lift it higher. We have SMP right now in sync. Let's see if we get the power move. And by the way, we may get a sandwich in now stack setting up here. You can see that we are regaining the 10 EMA, which is pretty much set for power trending. Yeah, it's just, I'm telling you those lines guys, golden, golden. You cannot trade without those. I mean, you can, but you're not going to have results. So see how important it would be right now to have a close above this level? This is the most important thing. But right now, Boeing is dumping. Disney is dumping. Remember Disney earnings, right? They're selling ahead of earnings probably. Home Depot is coming in. Uh, 3M is coming in. JP Morgan coming in. Financials are coming in. So remember how uh, strong they were before the market opened because we talked about them and we talked about XLF or made a new high and we talked about all these stocks. Now, the only green stock that I see right here. So still Morgan Stanley, a little bit into the green, but financials are pulling back in general. Uh, we have Costco, which is very strong. This is like Costco and Walmart are my ultimate holds. I love these stocks. I swing them. Uh, you can have an investment in them. Really great stocks to have in your portfolio, retirement portfolio. Uh, Pfizer is regaining a little bit of momentum off of the 47. So this is good for the Dow. Uh, Caterpillar coming in. So we have a lot of pressure from the Dow stocks while the NASDAQ stocks are getting a little bit of a lift. Uh, like I said uh, this morning and Randy highlighted this morning, a setup in Apple. Uh, Apple did an inside buy setup uh, off of the 20 SMA. And again, it's that 20 SMA. Microsoft, again, buy setup off of the 20 SMA. Really nice. NVIDIA setting up for another uh, buy setup as well. So NVIDIA, if today it's going to get over uh, 201, it's going to start popping higher big time. I also mentioned the fact that Amazon is trading into the 200 SMA. Uh, Facebook getting a little bit of a pop up. Where? From the 20 SMA. Thank you very much. All right. So we didn't talk about the uh, natural gas. Uh, uh, gas numbers came out and natural gas numbers came out and a na uh, natural gas is back into the $4 and guess where? Into the 20 SMA, okay? All right, so uh, we'd still have uh, Cisco with a little bit of strength is uh, trading into the highs and uh, yeah, we, we still have a pretty good uh, price action into the um, into these uh, tech stocks. Uh, and uh, also NASDAQ stocks, not only tech stocks, but NASDAQ stocks in general are getting a really nice influx of uh, power. Uh, definitely Apple is leading uh, right now. Pfizer, like I said, a bit to the upside. Uh, we have an overall uh, bearish momentum into energies, uh, XOM, um, CVX, Halliburton, we have uh, semiconductors like AMAT, LR6, and CLAC that are still remaining weak, STX as well. Uh, Micron is weak. Um, FTNT is really up on the day today. Adobe is higher today. Remember, they were a little bit lower into yesterday's trading session when we were trading this morning, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, CRM, Intuit are higher today. Yeah, Intuit, really nice daily rotation. That happened today. I'm in into it as well as a swing. 
uh, from last week. All right, I'm not loving this. Uh, the more this Dow is consolidating right here, it does. it's not a good sign, not a good sign, especially with Russell making a low here and uh, oil becoming super flat into the 69 area, just above the 69 area. So super flat here, uh, not really a good sign. Uh, we may have a shot in NASDAQ. Oh, okay, Randy, you were just asking about NASDAQ. So I'm looking at 35 for NASDAQ. Let's see if we get an earlier entry. That would be 33 or 34, 34 with confirmation. 34 would be entry in NASDAQ, 34. So NASDAQ long 34. And we're gonna be using that uh, 20 for the stop. And let's see if we get there. And the targets, like I said, targets, we're going to go for first target into the 50, 80 for now. If NASDAQ is going to start weakening, then we can, um, expect the market to not hold. Donna, if you have to hedge, then you don't have your analysis right. Hedging is for individuals that are overloaded in a position, so it doesn't really make sense here to hedge anything. Hey, Jean, when you're going the opposite way. So for example, we're taking long YM and short NASDAQ or the other way around. You're taking one long and one short. You shouldn't have to be in a position to hedge, for example. If you're in a, if, if you're like, um, no, why would they? Why would they? For what? Like, give me a reason why, why would they do that? And they would not be, uh, they would not be. So for example, if you were talking about a hedge, John, I'll think about it, right? So the indices typically move in sync and at one point or another, at one point, so let's say you're long in the indices, right? You wanna hedge something like, I don't know, maybe the VIX, okay? So it doesn't make sense. So when they're, it's a totally different, so yeah, with hedging, it's a totally different uh, aspect to it. It's different, you know, that that's opening another can of worms. There's a lot to talk about hedging. Lots and lots to talk about hedging. We don't have time today to talk about hedging. It would take me probably three to four hours to talk about hedging and how you can do that. But no, not in this case. 
All right, here we go, guys. Boom, trigger in NASDAQ. All right, let's see if we get some more buying pressure right now in YM. First target is 50. We are four point, two points away. Target one, 50. One point away. Are we getting greedy here? Bam, we have target one, I'm half out. If you guys are not trading multiple contracts, bring your stop to break even. Bring your stop to break even on the rest. The beauty about scaling into targets. Yeah, I love it. I was thinking about getting all out at 50. Apparently a lot of traders did. I have my stop at break even right now and I'm giving myself a chance for higher into the 80s. it's algorithmic trading today guys not a lot of follow through not a lot of velocity did you guys see those dark pools they're magic Robert, there will be many, many other trades. Why did you get out of YM? It has not stopped out and it has not a break even. Okay, that makes sense. If you want to take it all off at break even, if you don't feel comfortable, but break even is okay. But typically the rule of the game says that if you are bored in a trade, if you're bored in a trade, nobody on this planet or in the galaxy is going to give you the right to take you out of the trade. You have to stay in until targets are hit. Okay. <laughs> or stop out occurs. Okay. The moment you exit a trade, that's the moment when it's going to start ripping. So remember that. <laughs> oh, I know, Donna. Tell me about it. I, I, like, don't think, yeah, don't think that I don't do these kind of things. <laughs> yeah, like, sometimes I do them because sometimes I go like, oh, I'm not seeing the right price action. Robert, take a look right now at YM. See what I mean? It's, it's always like that. The moment when we decide, it's like, you know what? Let's take it all off here. We're done. Boom. Rocket emoji. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's always like that. It is laggard. It is laggard. We have a little doji that formed in NASDAQ right now. So NASDAQ is forming a little mini bull flat on the one minute. I would like to lift my stop a little bit. See the 43s? Let's lift the stop to 43, guys. NASDAQ trail. 43. All right, here we go. Target one again. Wow, I really picked like the messiest days for the open house. <laughs> and if you're got, if you guys are interested in more um, 
you know, how we trade. There are more videos on our YouTube channel that are going to uh, show you uh, many other days where we trade. <laughs> Robert, I am telling you, yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, negative yardage. Are you in Turkey right now? We're in Turkey. Oh my God, oh, assist me. I love Turkey. So basically you're on like a, on a continuous vacation there, right? Oh my God, Donna, that is so cool. Okay, I've never been there, but I've been to um, many places in Turkey. Uh, Kushadasi. Um, of course, Istanbul and all that stuff. Okay, so guys, I am looking at that 43. We have a 43.75. Remember, we have a trail at 43. All right, let's see if we're going to hold right here. 43.75 is where we dipped into. Revisit it. See the cute revisit into the 10 EMA? Pretty cool. All right. Now let's see if we get above 50 again. And get above 50, we're going higher into 55 again. Come on, YM. You could do it. You could do it. It needs to close over 07, guys. I'm telling you, 07 is the area. 07 is the area. Uh, another favorite place in Turkey, because now what, like, okay, Mar Maris. Love it. I miss Turkey. Oh my gosh, I miss Turkey so much. Antalya. Um, oh my gosh, I, I just miss Turkey. I didn't know you were there. Guys, when all this travel thing is going to be all over, you know, just you have to visit Turkey. It is just unbelievable. It is just unbelievable. Kushadasi is incredible. Yes. And the food there. Oh, my God. You got to go on a diet, like lose like 10 pounds at least before you go there. <laughs> oh, my God. Donna, leave your cabin. I know. Okay, come on, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting over 50 in that stack. <laughs> we're all there, negative yardage, we're all there. <laughs> oh my gosh, Turkey is just amazing. It's just amazing. Okay, let's see if we get and stabilize above the 50s. We have to stabilize above the 50s here. And by the way, you're so uh, negative yardage. Are there any ferries that take you to Greece? Because you're like so close to Greece. can be arranged. Oh my God, that's so, I know it's just crazy. When I was in Greece and Rhodos, they had, uh, they had uh, ferries that went to Marmaris and it was just amazing. Oh gosh, I am missing Europe so much. I am missing Greece. I'm missing Turkey, but 
Turkey and Greece are my favorite vacation destinations by far. Yeah, Kevin, totally. No, I'm kidding. And the prices are amazing. And the service, OMG. Like when you talk about five stars, like literally, like here in the US, five stars, it's kind of like a three star in Europe. Seriously. Five star in Turkey is like seven stars here. Like excellent. Yes, it, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. That's right, Christian. All right, come on. So 43s are still holding. Um, the 10 EMA is still holding. There's a real battle here. You can see that I zoomed in on the one minute to see if the power trend is still going to hold. We have been dancing around here for a very long time. Let's see. I mean, we're not, the fact that we're basing into the lows, it's not a good sign. Okay, so I have to be honest, it's not a good sign. We need to get above that 07 as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And these dojis here, ah. Uh, Kind of big problem for those because if we start breaking 88, we're going to start revisiting the 70s, and I'm not loving that. So keep an eye on that. NASDAQ holding the 44s. Let's lift the stop in NASDAQ one point higher to 44. Let's get a little greedy here. So NASDAQ lift the stop to 44. So new NASDAQ trail stop, 44. Kind of like a messy session today, right guys? Like yesterday was as well, a messy session. But this is trading, you know, it's not always roses. All right, so 44 is our trail stop. We don't want it because you could see here, look at the bottom details. They're trying to hold a tiny MA. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. So NASDAQ trailed out at 44 after hitting first target at 50. So I'm half out at 50 and half out at 44. All right. I don't know, but this low price action is making me super hungry. <laughs> and we have 25, 26, 27 minutes into the end of the London session. We're still holding. Hey, Robert. Yeah, you know what? These days where you don't have a lot of pop price action per se that is moving in, um, let's say a trending fashion and when it's super choppy. Uh, this is where your analysis is uh, super helpful because you're gonna need a lot more analysis in days, you know, days like today. All right, so the low is holding, the 65 is still holding in YM. I don't know for how long, but still holding. And by the way, in case you're wondering, why is this area holding here? Well, the reason why I decided to put that stop and the reason that I decided to take this as a trade was because the New York trading session that you guys are going to see in a second has a support level. All right. So here it is. 
Ta-da. All right. This was the decision for me to go long. And this is where we actually went long. And the reason for it is that we had an alternate support here. Okay. Into the seven seventies, right? Seventies, right? See the dotted line right here. Okay, so we had support here, we had support here, and we had support here. We had a rise in 200 SMA on the five minute, and uh, we had plenty of reasons to start going long. So that was one of the catalysts that drove me to this uh, YM here. And that is without extended sessions on. This is continuous price action with this extended session. So as you can see here, we also have this uh, support um, from the 90s. So we had support from the 70s, New York trading session and support into the 90s. And that kind of reinforced my decision to stay long. All right. So let's see here. Two minute back into this bullish above. Remember what we said at the beginning of the trading session. We need some kind of a setup right here. But I don't typically take trades. Um, uh, our hard stop is still 65, by the way, in YM. All right, so it's still 65 in YM. Not going to give it a lot more room. Um, in fact, I'm not going to give it a lot at all room. 65 it is. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just move on to the next trade or the next setup within the same one. Uh, the reason why. And here's the thing, you know, sometimes you get dinged out of a trade and then, you know, the trade goes, uh, goes um, uh, back up. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Sometimes I like to give it a little bit more room. Today, I'm not going to give room because we have a contest and we have a lot of things. Um, the real stop would be under 40. Okay. The real stop would be under 40. Okay. Here it is. I just stopped out right now. Okay, so the real stop is uh, under 40 right here. You see the 50 SMA and what it did, it just, uh, once it got over the 20, it just filled it right here. So I, we could expect a little bit of a pop-up. I'm not gonna hold it anymore. Like I said, we held it enough. And, um, but typically this is what happens. It, uh, because it hovers lower, it tends to drip into the next support level. And this is the next support level right here into the 50 SMA. So watch this. Okay, and watch its reaction right now. So I'm going to zoom it out for you to see the bottoming tilt that is forming here. So sometimes if you hear someone say that, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to give it a little bit more room. It doesn't mean, or I'm going to add here. It doesn't mean that, you know, that's a negative thing. A lot of traders that do not know technical analysis go like, oh my God, you know, like what I'm doing, I'm not adding to a loss, you know? But you, you have the technical reason to do that. And part of trading is knowing how to navigate price action, knowing how to work yourself out of a loss. But anyways, like I said, I stopped out. I'm done with it. So right now, contest time, right? Who wants, uh, who wants to win some passes to the Trade Out Loud trading room? All right, so let's go here. Okay. Everybody does. Hey, you know what? <laughs> How would you guys want to be a moderator? How about I pick, start picking some moderators soon? I am serious. I am serious. I need some help. I'm going to start picking some moderators very soon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> My check one two three one two one two. <laughs> awesome guys, we're gonna do that soon. I promise. Okay, so trade live, trade live, Alex, trade live. Rob, I don't want you moderating. Why is that? <laughs> okay, yes, I do have a favorite. Mark, Mark needs to. Uh, Mark. If you're in here, give me a yes. I want you to moderate crappy days, <laughs> like days like today. Like seriously, I want, and I'm going to tell you something about moderating, guys. And <laughs> no, don't say that. No, Donna, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If 
Yes, Mark. So you would have been perfect for a day like today or yesterday. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So here's the thing. Yes, exactly, Donna. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. One of the most important things in technical analysis and in trading is to talk out loud. There is a reason why my company is called Trade Out Loud. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> because when you hear yourself doing the analysis out loud, you reinforce what your mind is telling you. Because the first thing that comes out in your mind, the first thought about the trade, okay, is the right thought, okay? So if I put it, for example, if I ask in the room right now a question about a setup, is this a setup or not? You will be able to identify it immediately because your brain is going to dictate the right answer. If you are not talking out loud your pattern, your analysis, then you are overthinking it. Overthinking and trading is a killer. Remember, trading is visual. Trading is not about thinking. I know what I'm saying. Trading is not about thinking. If you overthink it, it's not going to work because trading is visual, is what you see, what you identify. So if I, for example, teach you strategies, if I teach you what a buy is, what a sell is, what a breakout is, what a breakdown is, when you, exactly, exactly, Robert. So I highly advise my traders that took the course to print some charts out from the manual or from some setups that we have taken in the trading room. You have like a plethora every day. We have so many strategies and so many patterns. So if you are looking at these patterns, print them out. For example, a buy setup, right? Print it out. And when you print out that buy setup, put it on the wall. Just don't keep it in a folder, in a computer. Don't save trees for that. No, just print it out, put it on a wall right in front of you. So the next time you're going to have that pattern, you're going to look at the pattern and look at your chart. Look at the pattern, look at your chart. And if they both match, bingo, you have a match. So you have a buy setup, for example. So you know that you need to have a certain area uh, on your chart that it's going to dictate uh, where your uh, where your uh, where you know where the price should go. Okay, so don't overthink trading. You can't speak as fast as you think. Just you know you and here's the thing, Robert. There's a fix for that. There's a cure for that. It means that you're trading a one minute or a two minute chart or even a tick chart. Am I right? Because the price moves so fast on those small time frames. See, I know it. Okay, so Robert, your biggest advantage would be to stick to a higher time frame chart, like the five minute. Go to a five minute. The think about it. Every candle has about five minutes to open and close. So you have five minutes to think about the next action in the market. It's way faster. You're going to get, so if you're a one minute trader, take, uh, take chart trader, setups are coming super fast, but the end result at the end of the month and at the end of the, uh, at the end of the quarter is that you're going to have so many commissions. It's not worth it because you're going to make a few ticks here or a few points here, but ultimately at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, it's going to be a disaster because you're going to have way more commissions than you have uh, gains. And your commissions are going to wipe out all the profits and all the hard work that you've done. You have to allow yourself to trade in a relaxed manner. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Good job, Ken. All right. So that would be my advice. You want to take it or you want to try it out for a week. Let me know how it goes. You know where, uh, you know, my email, let me know how, how that goes. And that's a quick fix. Guys, there are so many quick fixes to your trading. It is ridiculous. Okay. So you just have to make sure that you know, you allow yourself a little bit of time, you know, to think about it a little bit more time. And by the way, that YM 
you know, <laughs> I'm still watching it. So we're not off the hook yet with it. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's, that could be like a quick fix. All right. So prize time. Okay. So just remember that once you win the prize, email us at info at tradella.com. Uh, and in the subject line, you just put prize or whatever you want. I won the prize or give me the prize or whatever. Okay. All right. So I'm going to be awarding right now four passes for the trade out loud trading room. And you guys are also going to receive, um, uh, yes, Dan. Okay. <laughs> okay so uh, daniel it's your birthday okay we're gonna have a birthday song then okay yeah trade vaquette perfect perfect ken okay uh so yes so what was i saying <laughs> okay i i try to read you know uh i try to read so daniel um Okay, Daniel, I, you know, Daniel, because it's your birthday. Okay, send me an email because I'm going to be sending you a pass anyway. Okay, send me an email. Okay, and I'm going to send you a pass because it's your birthday. So we still have four to go and we have just awarded one because it was his birthday. <laughs> oh, of course, it's everybody's birthday right now. <laughs> okay, so Daniel, shoot me an email. You have, uh, you have a gift from us today. Okay. All right, cool. So let's go to prizes, guys. We will be awarding four prizes right now. So again, winners, please um, will uh, send me email, uh, send me an email to info at tradeallow.com. So here it goes, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. It's going to be an ABC type of answer. Please know ABCs before, the, before I read the question. Okay, so get ready, guys. Question, which order can be executed immediately? Is it A, limit order, B, market order, or C, stop loss order? The four right answers are going to receive the prize. Okay, and the correct one is market order. Okay, all right, so now give me some, uh, give me a little bit of time here. I'm going to be selecting, all right, the winners. Okay, let me go back, 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 back. All right, wow. There are like literally 500 answers in here at least. Okay. All right. Still scrolling. I'm telling you, it's a long list. And by the way, YM is setting up for another long over 300 and the stop is going to be 250 300 by 250 but we're going to do the prices right now okay the first right answer is coming from matt b matt b Oh, I'm sorry. It's Matt M. Matt M. Oops, sorry about that. Matt M. Please send email to info at tradeoutloud.com. You have the right answer. The next correct answer is from Joe A N G. Joe A N G. Please send an an. Uh, please send an email to info at tradeoutloud.com. Nick T. Nick T, please send an email to tradeoutloud.com. And Sean, Sean Mickelson, please send an email to info at tradeoutloud.com. All right, so we have our winners. We have four lucky winners. You guys are going to get access to the Trade Out Loud trading room. No way, Don, are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Congrats, you guys. Congratulations. So you guys are going to be trading with me for a whole month. No females. I know. Oh, you were number six. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. But we're going to have a lot more. So we're going to try to do like, uh, you know, having this, these kind of interactive events and uh, giving prices the way. It's not about the price. It's about the gift of knowledge. 
<laughs> okay, Th this is it. And the fact that you guys are here means the world to me because it means that more people want to learn about trading. Okay. Matt, okay, no, okay. All right. Okay, guys. So uh, right now I'm going to talk a little bit about the class. We have, I have received so many questions about, uh, about the futures class. I'm going to be answering some questions. Um, all right. So let's go here. Where is it? Okay. I see when you're setting up for trading, you're not setting up for talking. <laughs> of course. Okay, we do have a special, Eric. We do have a special. Okay, all right. So guys, to claim your prize, don't forget, send an email to info at tradealout.com. We will send you, uh, we will send you the, um, uh, the prize and the access. Your, your access is going to start tomorrow. Uh, subject line can be the prize or open house prize or whatever you want to put. I won the prize. Okay. All right, so we do have a special offer for the live futures trading room, and that is uh, you're going to receive uh, the on-demand video, which is a thousand dollars that is going to be waived um, because we're going to be sending you the course for free. You're going to understand how you need to position for your trades. In fact, uh, the recordings that I sent out yesterday and the day before yesterday came in with. Uh, exact position sizing for a trade, how that, how that position sizing works and how many contracts you can fit into your position size because it's so important uh, to position size for the trades. You need to fit the, uh, you need to fit the number of contracts uh, into your risk size. And that is the only constant that you have in trading. That's the only constant, the, the amount that you're risking per trade and per day. So for example, going to give you a quick example here. So for example, let's say you have a smaller account and uh, let's say you have, I, I don't know, let's say you have a $10,000 account, right? So your risk per trade is $100. That means that within a day, you're going to allow yourself three to four trades. So that means that your allocated risk amount for the whole entire day is $400 and you have $100 allocated for each trade. Now I have a quick tip for you in case, uh, you know, if you decide to, uh, uh, if you decide to, for example, respect the position size I'm going to share uh, because position sizing is quite difficult in a live market environment where you, you know, have the price that is happening super fast. And then you have the entry, you have to stop, you have to calculate all that stuff. Um, you know, I have a quick tip for you, which is into this, um, um, into this video course on how to do that. You can have a cheat sheet, uh, for example, for your risk size, and you can calculate, you know, how much, for example, for, for five contracts, for 10 contracts, for 15 contracts, for, uh, uh, I'm sorry, for, uh, uh, let's say for a five point stop or a 10 point stop for, uh, uh, let's say for a 15 point stop for a 20 point stop, and you could customize it and for your account. So when you have, and I actually have that right in front of me because I don't have time to do the math, but I do have uh, I do have the time to glance for a second. And if, for example, if I have a seven point stop, let's say in ES, for example, but if I have like between five and 10, then I minimize it. For example, for, uh, uh, for um, let's say I go to the 10 point so I can minimize my risk a little bit. Okay, so it's super easy to joggle in between those uh, areas and you just have it on your desk. You, you just quick glance and you know exactly how to position size. It's so super, uh, super easy. Uh, we also have a position sizing calculator that was developed by four amazing traders here in the trading room. And uh, you're also gonna receive that as part of the uh, live performance portfolio. Uh, so you're gonna get a lot of bonuses uh, with this, um, lots and lots of bonuses with this, okay? So this is just uh, the la creme de la creme, okay? This video course. All right, so basically every single day, it's pretty much what we have done every single day here, minus the slides, there are no slides, guys. So uh, when we start the trading room, you're, uh, we project the charts, you're gonna have the levels on. Uh, the levels are going to be on um, or at around nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, I work out the last details of the charts, nine o'clock to nine ten. I watch price action and I work out the details for that. 
uh, for those levels because the price action as we're getting closer into that segment um, is uh, imperative. All right, let me just take a quick look at charts here because let's see if we could squeeze another trade. Um, See, the five minute is very interesting here and the Dow, uh, the 15 minute is very interesting in the Dow. Over 300 stop to 50. Okay, so I'm gonna do the Dow here. Uh, so I'm gonna post it as well. The Dow long is going to be 300. It's two, two ticks away right now by 250. Okay, we're gonna use the same targets. Uh, target is going to be um, 310. Uh, no, it's going to be 320, 320 uh, first target, uh, 330, 340. Let's see if we get the lift right now. NASDAQ is already moving and um, yeah, NASDAQ already triggered here. So let's see. Uh, NASDAQ, yeah, NASDAQ has a sandwich. Let, let me just uh, share this uh, with you guys. Okay. So NASDAQ has a sandwich here as well. Uh, so if it gets above 56, yeah. Okay, so yeah, why I'm triggered for us. So if NASDAQ gets over, yeah, let's do NASDAQ as well. If you guys wanna do NASDAQ as well, uh, NASDAQ is gonna be 56 by 32, 56 by 32. Fifty six is the entry. Thirty two is the stop, and we're gonna go for target into uh, zero eighty. Okay, all right. So that's that. We have the YM. Uh, hey, Laura, thirty minute. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Oh, nice. Oh my gosh, Laura, that's really cool. Love this bottoming tail. Uh, and we have three minutes into it. This is this can trigger as well. It has a really wide stop though. Not gonna call it out loud. Not gonna call it out loud. Okay. All right. So where were we? Okay. So yeah, trading room. Okay. So pretty much what you can expect in the trading room is the same kind of analysis. Um, and uh, we just focus on trades. We discuss trades. Um, I like the fact that everybody in the trading room is really engaged and they come, you could see Laura here. So she's a, uh, she's a student as well and she's recognizing patterns. So one of the biggest things uh, that you could do for your trading is to start posting your own trades. Um, even if it's a, a stupid setup, let's say. Let's say you're really at the beginning, you have no idea what you were doing and you're posting, I wanna, I, I wanna buy it here, okay? Or you say it's like, I see a trade here and I think I'm gonna get it here. Listen, put it out there because once you get it out there, you know, you have accountability for, uh, for it. And I can comment on it and say, hey, this is good or this is not good, or you can tweak this and this is the way I see it. So you can learn from that. So that's the biggest thing that in the trading room, you can learn from the style. So it doesn't matter, just put it out there because if you don't ask the questions, you're never gonna know. And think about it. There are probably other traders that are either embarrassed. And by the way, there's no embarrassing and there's no stupid question when it comes to trading because this is your money. So there's no stupid questions when it comes to money. Put it out there. If you don't put it out there, you may not ever find out the answer. Okay. So we typically take uh, two to three trades per day. And by the way, uh, by the way, target one is hit uh, into, uh, into YM into 320. So I just took a little bit out here at 320 because I had an order here. It's really hard, I'm telling you, to talk and to trade at the same time. All right. So, um, all right. You guys see the slide. Okay. So there was a special offer. You, and I'm going to show you the website. So basically, this is what's included. We're, we do a pre-market game plan. You have the levels uh, on the screen. You have confidence from the levels. Sometimes, you know, the levels are so easy and they're like literally like, super simple because we just buy at the bullish above we put the stop into the support or where we have the stop and then target one two three are just really fast and some days like today where you get like one step uh, two steps forward one step back 
uh, type of uh, type of trading. All the trades are 100% guided. You uh, heard me here into the trading room, uh, you know, talking about uh, how I trail and how I see the market. It's all uh, all included in the trading room. All the parameters are going to be exact. You're going to hear me on the microphone with the entries, with the stops and targets. And of course, all the live trailing. You, we get like multiple lectures, uh, you know, throughout the month. You know, we discuss about technicals. We discuss about different things. You know, obviously, position sizing is a big thing, and risk management is a really big thing. You're always going to see the live screen share. Um, and I don't know if I'm missing anything, just let me know. I mean, you guys that are in there. So there are so many traders in here from my trading room. And if you guys have any questions, you can ask them and say, hey, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Uh, does she suck at trading? Is she good at trading? I mean, feel free to ask it. I don't mind. I really don't mind. Just feel free to ask. What are your thoughts about the trading room? Are you making money in the trading room? Are you losing money in the trading room? So what are you doing in the trading room? Just feel free to comment right here. All right, so um, this is the trading room. Like I said, you know, we have a special offer with this, um, uh, with this uh, free position sizing and this is actually a risk management class. And all right, here it is. Now and I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. All right, and then we have the class. This is the last month where we operate at this price. It's going to be 4,997 for, uh, for this month alone. Um, it's, uh, the course starts uh, August 23 to the, uh, towards the 27th, it's a five day. Um, the first course, the first course, um, actually these, these five days, so you're basically gonna try, you're go going to be educated by me five days, but you're also going to receive additional materials, okay? You're going to receive additional materials. And for this five, that's the last time, literally the last time when we're offering this bundle, you're going to receive the adapted swing trading course for futures, which is adapted for the day trader, uh, and that is for free. And we have the course that we sell for $5,000. Okay. So when you sign up for this course, for the day trading course, you receive that for free. And you also receive a lot of other courses for free. Okay. A lot of other courses that are included in here. Uh, we teach you like everything under the sky about trading. A to Z, everything. And yesterday we did a little bit of walkthrough of what we uh, of what we teach. It's like strat. We teach ten strategies. Uh, we teach you technical analysis, and literally, you won't need another book or any other class ever, ever, ever again. Literally. Okay. Um, so uh, the price will increase, like I said. Um, you also get the trading room for free uh, until December 31st, 2021. So that is four and a half months for free uh, in the trading room. So if you want to take advantage of that, this is the best deal. We're not going to have, and we actually don't do deals into education. There's no deal into education. When you go to Harvard, you don't ask, can I have a special deal for the Harvard? Okay, so Jorge, you're saying that the monthly plan is expensive. I don't think so. Because when you want to trade with real deal and you when, when you want to have assisted trading, that is literally a fraction of the price. You can do that kind of money like in one trade, one trade. And there are 20 trading days in a month. And that is one trade. And multiply that by two to three trades a day. And that is nothing. Go through our portfolio and that price is going to go up. It's going to go to $359 very soon. Okay, very soon. Yes, that is $200, $299 for the training room, $299. Okay, so I'm going to show you really quickly here. I'm going to walk you through. Uh, all right, here we go. This is the other screen. All right. So um, this is uh, this is the uh, live trading room, okay. Um, 
And basically we have a brief explanation here of what we do in the trading room. And the trading room is from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. Sometimes we're done early. Uh, sometimes we're done at 10 o'clock, like I said, sometimes we're done at 10.30, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is basically what you're getting, one to three trades a day, guided trading 100% on the mic, like I said, okay? Um, it's $299, not thousands, 299,000. I never said that. Okay, here's the pricing. Okay. <laughs> All right, here's the pricing, $299 per month. Yearly plan is $2,999. And we also have a one-day pass for $25, okay? All right. Okay, so yeah, it's $299, $299, okay? All right, so you get, uh, you get access, you can read. And by the way, here you have the futures trading performance. All right, you can just click on this. All right, you can see our performance every single month, right? Every single month at the end of the month. And then you ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it to pay $299 a month? You know, to get, you know, e even if you're trading micros, okay? Even if you're trading micros, just take out some zeros here and be realistic with your trading, okay? Be very realistic with your trading. So, as you can see here, we don't have a negative month. My only negative month, I think it was, I'm not really sure, but I think it was in 2018. Okay, so you can see it right here. Uh, and I can show you, let's see. Oh, it's not here. Let's see. I don't have it here. Okay, I don't have it on the screen. Okay, but July, we're up in July, oh, I'm sorry, in August, in August, we're up on the month. So we're sitting comfortably up on the month. Okay. Um, Kevin, Kevin, you found this room after a year of inconsistent win, the losing more than winning my losing has stopped. It cost me way more. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Um, I was like many, many years ago, I was in trading rooms as well because I needed to uh, learn how to day trade, uh, you know, coming from swing trading environment, adapting it to day trading is really a big change. So I was in multiple trading rooms and uh, I can tell you that, you know, um, back in the day, I would pay like $550 a month because there were not a lot of trading rooms back in 2000, Okay. Uh, Daniel, some of my huge wins. Uh, what are those? What are those? You mean commodities? Daniel, you mean commodities, but don't trade them. Or select micros. There are micros available. So for example, for copper, there's a micro available. There is a mini and a micro available. So you can trade the mini or the copper. Yeah, why not? Check your platform. You don't have to take the full size contract. You don't have to take the full size contract. You could take, you could take, um, you could take on a, a mini or a micro. Check with your platform provider and see if they accommodate that for you. The results are per contract. The results are per contract. No position sizing for it because everybody's different. Everybody's different. For example, I get this question a lot. Can I trade? Exactly. Can I take your trades? What kind of account size you need to have? You need to have at least thirty-five to forty thousand dollars to take it one contract, and that is because some of the commodities or some of the swings that we do. Okay. All right. So the futures trading room, like I said, we have. Uh, oh, and I said here. I think the only. Um, I think the only loss is we had. I think it was like November of two thousand eighteen, if I'm not mistaken. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. This is the only negative month. You could see that is 2018. And yeah, this is November. This is November, 2018. And this was our only, uh, we haven't had a losing month since then. And that th this, and by the way, this is $775 for the whole entire month. You could see it right here. Okay. It was an extremely tough environment. 
extremely tough environment was maximum volatility. Uh, Paul, I position size, position sizing, position sizing, position sizing. <laughs> Yes, this is uh, this is on our website, <laughs> Paul. That's why that's why I'm including the course as a special offer. That's why I'm including the course. Other than that, I'm only teaching it in my uh, in my class in the five thousand dollar class. I'm teaching it there. Okay, the fact that I'm offering right now for a bonus, like wow, this is like unheard of. Okay. So, like I said, if you go to our, uh, if you if you go to our page, for example, um, on the live uh, live trading room, okay, uh, you could scroll to the bottom, 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 and you can see here view futures trading performance. It speaks for itself. I mean, we haven't been around for one year or two years. We have been around for many, many years. Uh, Yes, correct. We had a winning trade. We had a winning trade in NASDAQ and uh, YM stopped out. All right. So the other thing that we have is the Power Income Futures Day trading course. And this is the course that is 4,997. This is a five day live course. No homework required. All you come to the course and I teach you how to trade. And the beauty about it, you don't have to study alone at home because you're gonna be in the trading room and you're going to be applying the material from the course in the trading room. So you don't have to do any work on your own. You're just going to be, your, the information is gonna be drilled into your head. Just like all the information that I have stored in my head right now in my brain was drilled into my brain, <laughs> force drilled into my brain. Literally every single day, same thing over and over and over again. And if you have someone that is drilling the information in your head, you're going to get it. The hardest thing for traders is to not understand a pattern or not understand a strategy or not understand or perform an analysis and then going searching it online and you find all the different weird stuff online, right? And you don't know if it's true or not because you cannot talk to a trader. So you don't know whether to apply that strategy or not because you have no idea if it's working or not. Our performance is a true testament. And this is what we teach. We teach you how to trade. And when we trade, we trade the, following the exact same rules from this trading class. And we apply it to trading every single day, regardless of the market environment. Okay. Do you trade with a smartphone or, or desktop? No, Olga, no. There's no trading on the beach. There's no lifestyle kind of trading, you know, somewhere, you know, on the top of a mountain. There's no such thing as that. Those are marketing trading companies that do that. Trading is a serious business. We do make computer recommendations as well. So we provide, with, we provide you with tons of information of what you need to get started. I think we have on YouTube, I think we have one of the videos where we talk about how to get started into trading. What is the computer that you need? What is uh, how many screens you need to, uh, to have and all that stuff. If you're day trading, if you're swing trading, all you do is you, uh, <laughs> it works from an island. Yeah. So I wish it was like that, but no, you cannot trade from your smartphone. OK, you cannot you can follow a trade. For example, you can uh, trail a trade uh, if you're in a swing trade. But no, you cannot trade from a smartphone. Laptop or desktops are fine. I typically, you know, advise traders to have at least two to three monitors. Three monitors is uh, ideal. OK, three monitors is ideal uh, because you need to have your uh, if you go back to the recordings that we had in the first day, I shared my home screen. You need to have all the time frames to see what's going on. You also need to have uh, your active trader, which is right in front of you where you execute your trades. That is where my center is, where my, uh, where my middle screen is. And then I have another screen, which is on my left-hand side, the one that I project over here. I actually have two more monitors where I watch 
the market environment. So I need to watch my stocks. I need to watch the Dow stocks, NASDAQ stocks, some, oil, some energy stocks, some financial stocks and all that stuff. So that is on, uh, those are on separate monitors to give me, to give me a gauge, gauge into what's happening in the market. You don't need that, but you do need to have the real estate to see all the timeframes and to see what's going on in the market. It's really hard to trade to day trade off a laptop. It's possible, but you're not going to have for example, the big picture, the overall picture. If you're doing options, it's fine. You could do it on a little laptop, but you cannot have the bigger picture because you still need to ana analyze. So you could, if you're a swing trader, one laptop is fine. Fine. That's all you need. A tablet is fine. You do your analysis. You do your patterns. If you have a really good software, uh, uh, software for your charting, you don't need anything else. Or your um, um, plat. If your platform is robust enough and you can use it on a smartphone and it's really easy to use then fine but other than that you know uh if you're so swing traders options traders can definitely use a laptop and that's it but if you want to take it you know to a professional level and say hey i want to quit my job let's say in a number of months or i want trading to be my ultimate career you have to be serious it's your business right it's your business you have to invest in your business and you invest in your business with really good lap a really good laptop or um and then you can uh, buy additional monitors to buy buy two monitors aside from your laptop or have a desktop with three monitors at least uh like i said but three monitors more than enough for a day trader because basically if you're we're going to be trading just um um indices on a day-to-day -day basis we're not going to trade natural gas on on a day trading pattern so that uh that helps a lot um uh no i trade with td ameritrade i'm not having any problem and one of the biggest issues is also the internet connection you have to have a really fast internet connection i do not trade off wireless um and um you have to um Call them, call your internet provider and ask them for the best possible speed on your computer, uh, on your internet connection. And again, don't trade on wireless. Don't trade on wireless. I have my keyboard, which is wired. I'm not using a wireless keyboard. I have my keyboard that is wired. Imagine being in a trade and imagine my batteries going, uh, uh, you know, ha being out of battery and I cannot execute anything or the mouse or anything. Um, so yes wired okay you have to be wired to the computer uh with uh with the best fastest internet speed and then you're going to see your think or swim is going to be just great okay i don't have i really didn't have any kind of issues with it uh, obviously all the platforms at one point or another are going to have some technical issues but that's part of trading nothing is perfect okay that's part of trading nothing is perfect all right, so circling back to the class here, uh, like I said, we do have traders that have taken the class in here, so you can ask them what's their take on the class. So basically come with an open mind. I teach you how to trade and every month we have a retake. Come to the retakes. Listen, if you took the class a year ago, or if you took the class two years ago, or if you took, keep on coming for the refresh, it's the only way to get into the rhythm of the market. It's the only way to refresh your memory because you're gonna go like, oh yeah, ooh, I forgot about that. Uh, you always forget, it truly helps. It helps me when I'm teaching uh, the class because it refreshes my memory all the time, okay? So, hey, Brian, we sent, we, hey, Brian, okay, so you, um, uh, I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, we sent emails every single month before that. So make sure that you still receive the emails. If you don't receive the emails, it means that you have unsubscribed. So send me an email, okay? And my team is gonna get back to you and see if you have unsubscribed or not. But please come to the retakes. It's the only place where you get to refresh all the material. The retakes are free always because it's the only way listen guys it is impossible literally impossible for you to remember everything that is being taught within these five days impossible 
So if you're going to retain probably seven to 10%, now the next time when you come, you're going to retain another 10%. So that's 20%. The more times you come, the more you are going to start retaining more information. My most successful traders, and I'm meaning the two comma club, two comma club. So that means lots of zeros, okay? Lots and lots of zeros. They have taken the course at least 16 times, not kidding you. And they're still coming. They're still coming. Why? Because they're trading. They have me in there on their background and they're still trading. They're still at the computer. They're scanning or whatever they may be doing. And they're listening to me because that's the only way you drill information. Repetition is key. And trading is about that repetition. Trading is about that repetition. Half the price above the 20 SMA. You're going to get a big push if you have the price that is trading under these conditions. Um, setups are very important. Strategies are very important. Trailing is very important. Okay. So there are all these things that are super, super, super important. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. Um, let's see if I'm missing any questions here. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Let's see. Okay. So NASDAQ is on its way to, uh, on its way to 80. Yes. Okay, so if you want to sign up for the class, send us an email at info at tradeoutlaw.com or you can simply sign in here. You can simply sign in here and you're automatically going to be enrolled with all the uh, with all the promotions. Okay, everything, everything that there is. We also provide you with a platform layout, even if you sign up just for uh, the trading room. Uh, if you're trading off the Think or Swim platform, don't reinvent the wheel. Put your effort in your learning how to trade. So I'm gonna, I'm making it as easier, easier, uh, easier as, as possible for all the traders to level out the playing field. So I'm gonna provide. If you're trading off Think or Swim, uh, you're going to have my layout. Uh, my platform layout so you don't have to reinvent the wheel and also if you're trading off a different platform you can customize it to the way i have my laptop okay thanks so much doji man it really is it really is and listen before you know uh like i said you know day trading i adopted day trading uh when i decided to um uh quit my job and uh, it wasn't easy, but it was something that I really wanted to make it work for me. So it's all a matter of how much do you really want it to work for you and how much do you really want it? Do you really want to quit your job? Because I really wanted to quit my job, really, really wanted to quit my job. OK, <laughs> I was commuting for two hours uh, to go to work every day and two hours to come back from work every day because it was so super busy. OK. Do you use web-based thinkorswim? No, I don't. I just use the uh, I just use the uh, thinkorswim uh, uh, thinkorswim um, uh, uh, thinkorswim. Um, what is it called? Platform. Yeah, platform. Yeah, I don't use it. I don't use the web-based. I so I don't log into the DD Ameritrade uh, website. Sometimes that can be helpful. For example, uh, you know, at one point or another, uh, some. Um, platforms are, um, you know, doing updates, their updates have glitches. And sometimes, you know, uh, they have issues with price action, they have issues showing price, you have issues with orders, etc. So uh, at that point, it's helpful to have, uh, to have, let's say that login handy. So you can log in because sometimes you you get your um, data from your phone or from your um, um okay guys we're almost closing in at 70 nasdaq so nasdaq is going higher it's going to 80 all right <laughs> okay sorry very distracted here very distracted by price action yeah so uh that's it with the platform like i said uh come with an open mind if you decide to sign up um no pressure um it's a relaxed environment really relaxed environment uh into trading um, and into teaching, 
And uh, it's uh, it's really great. I mean, we only have five star reviews on the education piece, only five star reviews on the education piece. That's it. I'm telling you. So we don't have any one that said, oh, my gosh, I took the class and I wish I never took the class or a three star review or a four star reviews. Oh, I wish I learned about this. No, it's the complete package. You're not going to find it anywhere else. It's like A to Z everything. It's going to uh, it's going to have that complete, complete package. Uh, for you. Plus, you get unlimited access to me. So for example, if you have a trade that is setting up at night and say, oh, you know what, I want to verify this. Am I seeing it right? Am I doing it right? Especially at the beginning, you know, just email me. I verified my email last time when I verify my emails around 10 o'clock at night. So I could take a look and uh, give you my bias. We have, you know, a lot of traders that are uh, looking uh, at different charts. Uh, for example, gold right now is uh, starting to move a little bit um okay uh larry if you're away for a week and i suspend we could put it on hold so again we could put it on hold so if you become a member of the trading room and let's say okay you know what i'm a subscriber i have to you know take a break you know i'm going on vacation then we put your account on hold so when you can uh, when you come back uh, you send us an email and say, hey, I would like to start now. So we unblock your account and then you can uh, join the, it's no problem. Yeah. All right. So uh, like I said, you know, we teach a lot of things. Uh, you could go to the website and you can see all the things that we teach. Um, and uh, there's actually way, there are actually way more, there's way more information uh, that we teach than it's right here. Okay, so we did a little walkthrough yesterday. So review yesterday's um, uh, review yesterday's uh, recording because we talked about the class um, in yesterday's training session. All right. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. So maybe you don't want to trade that week. Okay, so you can put your account on hold. Okay, and when you come back, say, okay, I want to come back now. So it's not like you're losing the money. Okay. Okay, so at this point, uh, typically because we have we are trading uh, Brian over that bullish above level. Let me just go back to charts because we're trading above that bullish above level right now. I would wait for the top of the hour. We have about four minutes into the top of the hour. Okay. So I would wait to see how this candle closes over here, and then we can raise the stop, for example, to this fifty nine or fifty eight or. Or something like that. That's what I would. Uh, that's what I would wait for. Yeah. All right, guys. Guys, this is a wrap. Uh, the originals. Uh, the original stop remains in YM. I hope you had a good glint of, of you know glimpse into our trading strategy, um, the analysis, and this can be yours. I mean, you can be thinking and trading like this. Uh, you just have to get trained to do that. Okay, just have to get trained. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. It was a fabulous three weeks. I love sharing with you guys information. I love the fact that there are so many women in here like Donna and Jane. There are so many women that are eager to learn how to trade. I love it. It is a great and women make really great traders because listen, if the trade is going against us, you just cut the trade. I mean, come on, we're moving on. Okay. So we don't try to save any trades that is not worth saving. Okay. Hey, Tammy. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So thank you so much, guys. I will see you. Uh, yes, I will see you guys in the course and in the trading room tomorrow. So congratulations to the prize winners. So I'm so happy for you guys. We have six winners, plus we have one more Joe birthday. Oh, Daniel, I'm sorry, Daniel, Daniel. Okay, we have a birthday gift. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been a pleasure spending three days with you guys. Really looking forward to working with you and achieving your trading goals. Trading is just awesome. I am telling you guys, trading is awesome. Overall is awesome. Think about it. Lockdowns last year, we were thriving as traders. We can provide from our for our families. I mean, that's the bottom line. We can provide for our families. 
via trading, okay? All right, thanks so much, everyone. Hope you all have a great rest of the day. I will see you in here um, for those of you that have signed up um, uh, tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of the day and happy trading, happy and profitable trading. Bye.